Hi, in this video, we're going to solve for brachistochrone problem. Let's find out what it's all about. Brachistochrone came from Greek words, which means shortest time. For brachistochrone problem, we are going to solve for the past of the shortest time. The statement of the problem is quite simple. If a particle at point A is going to slide down to point B, what will be the path that minimizes the time? Or in simpler word, if we want to build a ramp, what will be the shape of the quickest time? You might want to guess that it is a straight line, but the answer is no, because that is the answer for the shortest path. Here we are talking about the shortest time. I provide here some of the answer that you might want to choose and let's see later whether you got it right. You can choose either green, pink or purple line. Now let us put it in a graphical way. Point A at the origin and point B at another. To make our analysis easier, we are going to change a bit from the convention. Here, x-axis is pointing downward and y-axis is pointing in the right direction. The particle is going to slide down under the influence of gravity only, which is also the direction of the force. All other factors such as frictions or resistance or any sort are ignored. Back to the problem, we wanted to know the shortest time. Taking from the definition of velocity, V is equal to dS over dt. Therefore, dt is dS over V. Integrate this, we get the definition for t and we integrate for both sides. Now, we need to define dS, the element of the path. In two-dimensional, from Pythagoras, dx square is equal to dx square plus dy square. Taking the square root, now we have the definition for ds. And for v, we are going to use one of the equation of motion, v square equal to v naught square plus 2ax. And since we release the particle from stationary, initial v v naught is just zero. The acceleration is gravity G and now leaving V just equal to Z to GX. For the S, we are going to simplify it further. We are going to taking out DX out of the square root and we can have DS in this form where Y prime is dy DX. Substitute all together, now we have T in this form. Observe that we eliminate the term for dy, so we can just focusing in solving the integral for dx. Since 1 over z to g are just constant, we can simply take them out of the integral, and with this form, we can proceed to the next step. From calculus of variation, there is this formula that we can use to find extremum which is either maximum or minimum and it is so called Euler equation so we're going to use it the Euler equation is given by partial f partial y minus d over dx partial f partial y prime equal to zero by solving for f we can get the extremum of f in our case f the functional is the term inside the integral and we're going to substitute this into the Euler equation for the first term since f does not contain y therefore the first term just becomes zero so we just need to solve for the second term which will be in this form with this form we have the derivation of the term with respect to x is equal to zero which means that this, the term itself is just a constant. Next, we simplified it and rearrange. Now, 
it is in this form. Square all the terms. Now we have the equation in this form equal to 1 over 2a, which is basically just another constant. Next, we simplified and rearrange. Now we have it in y prime or dy dx term becoming equal to x over square root 2ax minus x square. To find y, we are going to integrate for both sides. And next, we are going to solve for the right integral. We are going to use substitution technique where x is equal to a 1 minus cos theta. Effectively, dx will become equal to a sine theta d theta. And the next step is to substitute for all x's and dx term, which will becoming like this, much longer, but don't worry, this can be simplified further to become like this. Now, the sine theta term can be eliminated. What's left will be a times the integral of 1 minus cos theta d theta. After integration, we have y is equal to a theta minus sine theta plus constant c. To solve for constant c, we substitute the condition at the origin and we find out that c is just 0. Finally, we have the term for y is equal to a theta minus sine theta and combined with the term x earlier, x is equal to a 1 minus cos theta and these equations are just basically referring to a cycloid where a is the value at point b. At this point, you might ask what is a cycloid? Well, to understand what is a cycloid, it is much easier by imagining a disc that rolling to the right as it touches the flat surface of a ceiling. If you observe a point at the center of the disc, the trace it will make will be a straight line parallel to the ceiling. But if you observe a point on the surface of the disc, the trace will be up and down like a quadratic curve but not quite. And this blue curve is the cycloid path, which we referred earlier, is the minimum time for the particle to reach point B. To check back with the question in the beginning, the cycloid path most probably resembled by the pink one. Did you got it right? A bit of extra information, the cycloid is also referred to as Tautochron curve, which referred to as pass of the same time. So if we build a ramp in the form of cycloid, and if we put several particles on this ramp at different position, and then release them at the same time, they will reach the bottom exactly at the same time, independent of their initial positions. And this time is given by t is equal to pi, times square root of r over g, where r is the radius of the disk that form the cycloid and g is the gravity acceleration. I include some link in the description as well so that you can refer to other videos related to our discussion. That's all for now. Hope it is beneficial. Bye bye.